How men and women got together. Blood pagans. Old man had made the world and everything on it. He had done everything well except put the men in one place and the women in another, quite a distance from each other. So they lived separately for a while. Men and women did everything in exactly the same way. Both had buffalo jumps, steep cliffs over which they chased buffalo herds so that the animals fell to their death at the foot of the cliff. Then both the men and the women butchered the dead animals. This meat was their only food. They had not yet discovered other things that were good to eat. After a while, the men learned how to make bows and arrows. The women learned how to tan buffalo hides and make teepees and beautiful robes decorated with porcupine quills. One day, an old man said to himself, I think I did everything well, but I had one bad mistake, putting women and men in different places. There's no joy or pleasure in that. Men and women are different from each other, and these different things must be made to unite so that there will be more people. I must make men mate with women. I will put some pleasure, some good feeling into it. Otherwise, the men won't be keen to do what is necessary. I myself must set an example. Old man went over to where... <coughs> 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 Guts. Old man went over to where the women were living. He traveled for four days and four nights before he saw the women in their camp. He was hiding behind some trees, watching. He said to himself, Ho, oh, what a good life they're having. They have these fine teepees made of tan buffalo hide, while we men have only brush shelters or rod stinking green hides to cover us and look what fine clothes they wear while we have to go around with a few pelts around our loins really i made a mistake putting the women so far away from us they must live with us and make fine tents and beautiful clothes for us so i'll go back and ask the other men how they feel about this so old man went back to his camp and told the men what he had seen. When they heard about all the useful, beautiful things the women had, the men said, let's go over there and get together with these different human beings. It's not only those things that are, are worth having, said old man. There's something else. A very pleasurable thing I plan on creating. Now, while this was going on in the men's camp, the chief of the women's village had discovered the tracks of men and had made while prowling around. She sent a young woman to follow them and report back. The young woman arrived near the men's camp, hid her and watched for a short while. Then she hurried back to the women and as fast as she could and told them everything. There's a camp over there with human beings living in it. They seem different than us, taller and stronger. Oh, sisters, these beings live very well, better than us. They have a thing shooting sharp sticks, and with these they kill many kinds of game. Food that we don't have, they are never hungry. When they heard this, all the women said, How wish that these strange human beings could come here and kill all kinds of food for us. When the women were finishing their meeting, the men were already over the hill toward them. The women looked at the men and saw how shabbily dressed they were, with just a little bit of rawhide around their loins. They looked at the men's matted hair, smelled the strong smell coming from their unwashed bodies. They looked at their dirty skin. They said to each other, These called men don't know how to live. They have no proper clothes. They're dirty. They smell. We don't want people like this. The women chief, women chief cur hurled a rock at old man, shouting, Go away! Then all the women threw rocks and shouted, Go away! 
old man said. It was no mistake putting these creatures far away from us. Women are dangerous. I shouldn't have created them. Then the old man and all the men went back to their own place. After the men left, the woman chief had second thoughts. These poor men, he said, she said, they don't know any better, but we could teach them. We could make clothes for them. Instead of shaming them, maybe we could get them to come back if we dress as poorly as they do, just with a piece of hide or fur around our waist. And in the men's camp, old man said, maybe we should try to meet these women creatures once more. Yep, yes, we should give it another chance. See what I did on the sky. He opened his traveling bundle in which he kept his jerk meat and other supplies, and out of it took a resplendent white buckskin outfit. I managed to steal this when those women weren't looking. It's too small for me, but I'll add on a little buffalo hide here and a little bear fur here and put a shield over there where it doesn't come together over my belly and I'll make myself a feather headdress and paint my face. Then maybe this woman chief will look at me with new eyes. Let me go alone to speak with the women creatures first. You stay back a little and hide and I've straightened things out. So the old man dressed up as best as he could. He even purified himself in a sweet bath, which he thought up for this purpose. He looked at his, at his reflection in the lake waters and exclaimed, Oh, how beautiful I am. I never knew I was so good looking. Now that women chief will surely like me. Then old man led the way back to the women's camp. There was one woman on the lookout. Even though the men were standing back in hiding, she saw them coming. Then she spotted old man standing alone on a hillside overlooking the camp. She hurried to tell the woman chief, who was butchering with most of the other women at the buffalo jump. For this job, they wore their poorest outfits, just pieces of rawhide with a hole for the head, or maybe only a strap of rawhide around the waist. What little they had on was stiff with blood and reeked of fleshy slaughtered carcasses. Even their faces and hands were streaked with blood. We'll meet this men, these men, just as we are, said the woman chief. They will appreciate our being dressed like them. So the woman chief went up to the hill on which old man was standing, and the other women followed her. When she saw the woman chief standing, when he saw the woman chief standing there in her butchering clothes, her skinning flint knife still in her hand, her hair matted and unkempt, he exclaimed, "Ha! Her rumph! This woman chief is ugly. She's dressed in rags, covered with blood." She stinks. I want nothing to do with a creature like this. And those other women are just like her. No, I made no mistake putting these beings far away from us men. And having said this, he turned around and went back the other way he had come, with all his men following him. It seems we can't do anything right, said the women chief. Whatever it is, those male beings, Mr misunderstand it but i still think we should unite with them i think they have something we have got and we have something they haven't got and these things must come together we'll try one last time to get them to understand us let's make ourselves beautiful the women went into the river and bathed they washed and combed their hair braided it and attached the hair strings to of bone pipes and shell beads they put on their finest robes of well-tanned, dazzling white doe skin covered with wonderful designs of porcupine quills more colorful than the rainbow. They placed bone and shell chokers around their necks and shell bracelets around their waists. On their feet they put 
purpley quilled moccasins. Finally, the women painted their cheeks with sacred base paint, thus wonderfully decked. They stood on their journey to the men's camp. In the village of the male creatures, old men was cross and ill-humored. Nothing pleased him. Nothing tasted good. He slept fitfully. He got angry over nothing, and so it was with all the men. I don't know what's the matter, said old man. I wish women were beautiful instead of ugly. <laughs> Sweet smelling instead of maldorous. Good tempered instead of coming at us with stones or bloody knives in their hands. We wish it too, said all the other men. Then a lookout came running, telling old man, The women beings are marching over here to our camp. Probably they're coming to kill us. Quick, everybody, get your bows and arrows. No, wait, said old man. Quick, go to the river. Clean yourselves, anoint and rub your bodies with fat. Arrange your hair pleasingly. Smoke yourselves up with cedar, put on your best fur garments, paint your faces with sacred red color, put bright feathers on your heads. Old man himself dressed in the quilled robe stolen from the women's camp which he had made into a war shirt. He wore his great chief's headdress. He put on his necklace and bear claw. Thus arrayed, the men assembled at the entrance of the camp awaiting the women's coming. The women came. They were singing. Their white quilled robes dazzled the men's eyes. Their bodies were fragrant with the good smell of sweet grass. Their cheeks shone with sacred red face paint. Old man exclaimed, Why, these women beings are beautiful! They delight! my eyes their singing is wonderfully pleasing to my ears the bodies are sweet smelling and alluring they make our hearts leap said the others men i'll go talk to this woman chief said old man i'll fix things up with her the old met with woman chief in the meantime remarked to the other women why well, these men beings are really not an uncouth as we thought Rawness is a sort of strength. The sight of their arm muscles pleases my eyes. The sound of their deep voices thrills my ears. They are not altogether bad, these men. Old man went up to the woman chief and said, Let's you and I go someplace and talk. And yes, let's do that, answered the woman chief. They went someplace. The woman chief looked at old man and liked what she saw. Old man looked at the women chief and his heart pounded with joy. Let's try one thing that has never been tried before, he said to the woman chief. I always like to try out new useful things, she answered. Maybe one should lie down. Try this, said old man. Maybe one should, agreed the woman chief. They lay down. After a while, old man said, this is surely the most wonderful thing that ever happened to me. I couldn't ever imagine such a wonderful thing. And I, said the woman chief, I never dreamed I could feel so good. This is much better even than eating buffalo tongues. It's not too good to be properly described. Let's go and tell the others about it, said old man. When old man and the woman chief got back to the camp, they found nobody there. All the male creatures and the women beings had already paired off and gone someplace, each pair to their own spot. They didn't need to be told about this new thing. They had already found it. When the women and men came back from wherever they had gone, their whole bodies were smiling. Their eyes were smiling. Their mouths were smiling. So it seemed. Then the women moved in with the men. They brought all their things, all their skills to the men's village. Then the women quilled and tanned for the men. Then the men hunted for the women. Then there was love. Then there was happiness. 
Then there was marriage. Then there were children. Based on four fragments dating from 1883 to 1910. And that is it. Thank you for joining us. Come back next time for The Well-Baked Man by the Paima Tribe.